Well, hello, this is Pastor Gene Simmons at All the World Christian Center in Grants Pass, Oregon, and uh, we are doing our Wednesday night Bible study, and we've been going through the book of Revelation, and uh, so this week we are on chapter 16, and where does that place us in time? Basically, we're kind of in the middle of the tribulation. Uh, the enemy has already come in and deceived the people and made a uh, promise to Israel and then broke the promise and the Antichrist has moved in to make himself God. Well, God didn't like that. So God's going to deal with the devil and the Antichrist and the demons. And uh, up until this point, there's been some judgments that God has poured out, the, the trumpets and the, the different... Uh, judgments he's poured out but they were all limited in scope but uh, this last uh, these last judgments it's called the bulls and they are not they're not limited God's going to take care of evil he's going to defeat the devil and his crew and all those people that, that are following after him that includes the antichrist and the false prophet and all of the the different uh uh, entities that have turned away from God and uh, refused to repent and refused Jesus. So let's take a look at chapter 16 and kind of get an idea. This is going to be kind of tough for, for those of you who uh, realize that uh, you say, well, how could God be a, a, a gracious, loving God and still pour out all that wrath? Well, basically, he's... he's uh, share the the good news the pure fact that the people don't have to go through that wrath uh they basically are, can be saved by grace just like every person that's out there can listen to what god says receive jesus as his, his lord for god loved the world that he gave his only begotten son whoever believes on him would not perish but have everlasting life so i just want to encourage you uh, if you're out there and you haven't received jesus as your lord that's the one way you're going to get, the only way you're going to get out from the judgment of God. And uh, God's a gracious God, but he's also a just God. He has to deal with evil. And for those people that didn't uh, give their, their evil to Jesus and let him pay the price for it, well, they're going to have to pay the price for their own evils. So let's see some of the price that's going to come out. And this is the middle of the tribulation now. If you're a uh, a born again Christian now, and you're looking for a soon coming king. I'll just stay with it and keep looking because Jesus is a soon coming king. And uh, the Bible says that we're going to be, uh, when this tribulation is happening, we're going to be celebrating in heaven with Jesus. So here it goes. This is chapter 16 and verse 1. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the, the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. We stop and think, God's talking to angels, and he's saying, okay, it's time to go and pour out bowls of wrath. Wrath is not a good thing. It's, an, it's a hard thing. The wrath of God on the earth. Now, I'll make one more statement before I go on to the next verse, and that is that, uh, that God is an all-powerful God. He's the creator of everything. He knows everything. He is everywhere. He's omnipotent. And he's all-powerful. And uh, the end result is he's going to win. So my advice is to be on his side because the devil is going to lose. He's a liar. He's going to deceive a lot of people. And you're going to see what's going to happen to the people he's deceived here. And I just don't want anyone out there listening to be one of them. Okay? So here we are in verse 2. <clears throat> the angel's going to pour out the first bowl. It says, So the first bowl went and poured, the, the first went out and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and the foul and loathsome sore came upon the, the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshiped his image. So the first bowl is not going to be fun because. Uh, the mark, those that have taken the mark of the beast, uh, they think they're getting a good deal because they can go and buy and sell, but they're going to get, a, they're gonna, they're, God's going to pour boils out on them. Now, is that, has God ever done that before? 
Yeah, well, he sure did. Back in the, when Moses was uh, in Egypt and he was trying to get the people delivered. Uh, over here in, in Ephesians, or Exodus chapter 9, uh, he says, he says, So the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take for yourselves a handfuls of ashes from the furnace and let Moses scatter it towards the heavens in the sight of Pharaoh. And it will become fine dust in all the land of Egypt. And it will cause boils to break out in stores on man and beasts throughout all the land of Egypt. Then they took the ashes from the furnace and stood before the Pharaoh. And Moses scattered them toward heaven. And they caused boils to break out on, on, in sores on man and beast. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils. For the boils were on the magicians and all of the Egyptians. But the Lord hardened the heart of the Pharaoh, and he did not heed them. He, just as the Lord has spoken to Moses. Now, this happened a long time ago. Did Egypt repent over that? Was this a miracle from God? Yeah. Okay, one of the things I've learned as I go through there is that that. Uh, you know, God was with Israel when they when Israel got delivered. They went clear across the the land. God was with them forty day, forty years, and He was His presence with them continually during the daytime. He was a cloud over them to keep the sun from cooking them when they're out in the desert, and at night He was uh, He was a ball of a fire that gave them light and heat so they didn't freeze out there. And, he, and then He fed them. For 40 years. This is the whole nation of Israel. Supernaturally. This is, these are miracles. This is signs and wonders. This is God in their presence. But even at that. Here's people seeing God doing all this stuff. On a continuous basis. Supernatural manifestations of God. And his presence. And so people turned away from God. And the, the scripture says that. None of the people that went into the desert. To start with. Survived. Only their children did because of their unbelief. And so, believe it or not, what, what I, my heart is that, that uh, uh, every person would receive Jesus as Lord and, and not harden their heart, but allow Jesus to be that, uh, the, the salvation of their soul, the God of their salvation. So, anyway, so here we are in verse 2 or 3. He said, The second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became blood as of a dead man, and every living creature in the sea died. Now, this is the second bowl. Did God ever do that before? He did the same thing when he was with Moses and the Pharaoh, turned that, the whole river into blood. Did it turn the Pharaoh away? No. Pharaoh still rejected God and, uh, and went after Israel. So it's not, a, it's not a new thing. Verse 4, the third bowl, if you think it was bad to have, turning the, the sea into, uh, into blood, and all the fish died, then the, the people had to have something to drink, so they went to the springs and the rivers and the, the lakes. And guess what God does in this next? He says, Then the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and the springs of water, and they became blood. And I heard an angel of the water saying, You are righteous, O Lord, the one who is and who was and who is to be, because you have judged these things, for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink. It is their just due. Okay, there's justice happening to all these evil people that have been killing the saints and the prophets. Okay? And believe it or not, when the time gets here, the, the end is, is happening, the devil is still going to be trying to kill the body of Christ. Right now in our nation, uh, the enemy is trying to stop the gospel. 
They don't want you talking about Jesus. They don't want you teaching about the history of our nation. Uh, and they don't want you talking about Jesus in the schools uh, because uh, it's a threat to them. But Jesus loves them. Jesus loves every one of them. Our job is to love them and pray for them. Love them and pray for them. And then share the good news. God says that he, he gave you his word and he gave you your testimony. If you're saved, you have a testimony that somebody needs to hear. You need to go share it with them. And love on them. Do something that you normally wouldn't do. Especially to somebody that has not treated you properly or been respectfully. So go and show the love of Jesus and get them saved. Okay? That's better than having them go through what's coming up. Verse 7. It says, I heard another from the altar saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. So these angels in heaven understand that what God is doing is right. Now there's a whole lot of people that that don't know Jesus and don't realize that there that, that sin has consequences. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And there's going to be a punishment for sin. Sin uh, is 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 what separates us from God. But Jesus paid that sin, the price for that sin. So we need to believe that because there's a lot of people out here, and I'm looking this look, we're looking at the end times here. And there's a lot of people that no matter what God does to get their attention, they reject them. So verse uh, verse number eight says, This is the fourth bowl. God's gonna pour out some more of his judgment here. Listen carefully. He says, Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. Heat. And they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. There it is right there. People are seeing the, the hand of God firsthand. God's telling them, you need to repent. You need to ask Jesus to be your Lord. You need to surrender your life to him. And they say, they call him bad names. They blaspheme him. And then they did not repent. And they keep serving the devil. Next bowl coming up, the fifth bowl. Darkness and pain. It says, then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast. And his kingdom became full of darkness and they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. They blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores. And they did not repent of their deeds. Same thing happening here. I mean, the enemy is, uh, is the, the devil is getting taken down. And these people that hate God are having to pay the price of it. Do they repent? No. Uh, can you imagine chewing your tongue off it's not a it's not a pleasant experience uh there's people that that are have mental breakdowns that do that and it's a it's a horrible thing to happen to a person and, but here it says they're going to be gnawing on their tongues so anyway uh the pain is going to be real but they still do not repent okay Bowl number six. Here comes the next thing God's going to do. Now, if you're familiar with uh, with geology uh, of the area around Jerusalem, if you go over the mountains uh, to the east, you'll you'll find uh, the, there's a big plain out there, and in the middle of it is the Euphrates River. And the Euphrates River, uh, uh, right now, uh, it has a, a bunch of dams on it. Um, and they're, they could actually close up the Euphrates River right now with just by stopping the water from flowing through the dams. And uh, so basically there's a reason that, that the Euphrates River is going to be dried up. 
It says, Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up, so that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Okay, so basically, we got a big battle coming up. It's called the Battle of Armageddon. Okay, and who is it going to be? It's going to be uh, millions of soldiers coming in from the east to take over and destroy Israel. So, uh, in order for them to come, they have to come across the Euphrates River. So, if the, the Euphrates River uh, is dried up, they're not going to be able to march over there. Now, a lot of things have changed in, in, in the way people are transported right now uh, are different. But still, God is showing the, the people that whatever happens, uh, God's still in control. In verse 13, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Okay, there's the th three evil beings. Now, how many of you know that God is a three part, three, three persons? He's, a, he's one God, three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, here's the devil is Satan himself. And then we have the Antichrist and the false prophet. And they are taming up to try to take out God. Okay? And the frogs are the demons that are are uh, that that are, are released by the devil so right now we have to we have to deal with that and one of the things that i just wanted you to, to be aware of, the bible says don't fear he says we have authority over the power of the devil the bible says whosoever thing whatever things you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatsoever things you loose will be loosed in heaven he says these signs will follow them that believe in my name they will cast out devils so as a believer we could cast those out but the problem is is that we believers are going to be in heaven with jesus and these people that are on the earth maybe they haven't even heard about jesus maybe they haven't heard about uh the power of the holy spirit maybe nobody's ever shared the word of god with them and they don't know what to do so they are suffering okay verse 14 says and there are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Okay, now, what's going to happen is there's going to be this last big huge war called the, the Battle of Armageddon. And, uh, and, it's, and these demon spirits are going to go out and they're going to, uh, they're going to perform signs and wonders and they're going to get nations to join them in this battle against Israel. Okay? Now, what about America? So do you think America might possibly do that? Well, right now, America wouldn't do that. But, uh, in just in my few years at, at, on this earth, uh, I have watched our nation change. Uh, a number of years ago, 85% of the people on in the United States were confessed Christians and now we have less than 50 percent okay right now the the enemy is deceiving people and so if all of a sudden all of the Christians were taken out like on the the rapture of the church boom in the twinkling of an eye we'll be taken out we'll be with the Lord all of a sudden here's America with no one to resist the devil, no one to bind the devil, and no one to vote or to fight against the devil. So here we have a whole population of people that say, okay, let's go for it. Let's go and let's have one world order and we'll uh, get the mark of the beast and we'll do all the things that are necessary. So what we have to do is realize that uh, when Jesus comes, strange things are gonna happen. But if your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, if Jesus is your Lord, boop, in the twinkling of an eye, you'll be caught up in the air. We will be with him forever. You can comfort yourself with those words. Amen? So, uh, let's go over to verse 15. 
Now, this is in red in my Bible. In other words, Jesus is speaking these words. He says, Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Okay, here's Jesus warning people right now. He's warning us. He says, we need to be ready. He's coming as a thief and knife. And then, bang, he's going to come in the twinkling of an eye. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He'll tell you all about it. Okay? Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments. Okay? So we need to be aware that he's coming. And we need to be walking in holiness. Our gar garments need to be white. Okay? In other words, Jesus is our Lord and we're doing it his way. And it says, if you don't, he says, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. You know, the time will come when people will reject Jesus and, and their, their shame will be revealed. Verse 16 says, And they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew Armageddon. Now, Armageddon is actually a place where a lot of battles were were uh, fought with in Israel over the years before Jesus, and uh, and actually it's uh, it's translated uh, it means the hill of Megiddo. So if you know where Megiddo is, then you uh, you'll know basically the area where the Battle of Armageddon is. That's about 50 miles north and west a little bit of Jerusalem. So there's going to be a huge battle there. And they gathered them to the place called, in Hebrew, called Armageddon. Verse 17 says, Then the seventh angel, now this is the last of the major uh, weapons that God's going to use to deal with all of these people that are lined up against him. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the, on, into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. Okay? Now, when was the last time we heard that? When Jesus was on the cross, he said, It is finished, right? He had paid the price for all of the sin of the world. And now, the people that were righteous have been caught up to, to be with him. And who's left but the people who have rejected God and are evil... And uh, he is going to deal with them right now. And he says, it is done. This is not a t temporary or a partial fix. This is not just uh, turning a little bit of water into blood or making a few boils come on a few people. This is going to be it. Verse 18 says, And there were noises and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as mighty and great earthquake that has not occurred since men were on the earth that sounds pretty you know if you be hiding in your in your building you'll probably fall over okay i don't know where you're going to go to hide from this huge earthquake it's going to shake the earth verse 19 says now the great city was divided into three parts the great city is jerusalem three parts actually you realize that right now, uh, Jerusalem, some of it's controlled by Israel, some of it's controlled uh, by uh, the Palestinians, and some of it's called is is, uh, is controlled by both. So now the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and the great Babylon was remembered before God. The great Babylon, as, as most of theologians have, have uh, said, that this is, this is ro the Roman Empire at that time, when this was written. The Roman Empire uh, ruled most of the whole uh, East, so, and that included some of Europe. So uh, Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. So God's going to deal with this evil. Let's see what he does. He 
says, then every island fled away and the mountains were not found. So the, basically the mountains are going to collapse and the islands are going to sink into the sea. So probably living on an island out there someplace is not a really wise, wise place to be. Okay? But that's not the, the, the hard part. The hard part is coming up in verse 21. The last verse here. It says, And great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Now, I, in the study that I read, a talent is about 100 pounds. Can you imagine a hailstorm when the hailstones were 100 pounds? Can you imagine the damage that's done to the earth and to the inhabitants of the earth? It says here, men blaspheme God because of the plague of the, the hail, since the plague was exceedingly great. Okay? Now, so God's dealing with the, the evil that is there. And uh, we get to chapter 17 and chapter 18, he's going to deal with a couple of other things that, that have to be dealt with. One is, it was uh, immorality, the spirit of Jezebel. Uh... And then he's going to deal with the, 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 the fall of Babylon. Babylon, the great empire, is going down. So, believe it or not, uh, God's got a... Uh, evil is not going to prosper in these last days. So, I just want to encourage you uh, to remember... That God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. That his word is forever settled. That his grace and mercy are here and available to each of us right now. We can repent of our sins. We can confess Jesus as Lord. And we can make eternity uh, in heaven our home forever. But it's our choice. God will not force you. And God will not make you. He's revealed himself to us. And the thing about it is, is that uh, his word is going to go forth and won't, it will accomplish what pleases him. So I'm releasing the power of his word right now into your heart. And I just pray that God will touch you and bring you into a right relationship with him. That his grace and his mercy will be the redeeming part of your life. And that words coming out of your mouth will be, Great is my God. I, I have victory in Jesus. Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. And that celebration is going to happen. What's, what happened to me? I tell you what, I have joy. And I've been around the world. Uh, I've been around the world quite a bit. And I've, I've been uh, pastoring for the last 38 years. And I can honestly tell you that I love the Lord, and the more I study and the more I experience Him, the stronger that relationship is. But I'll tell you what, all of the evil and all the bad things that are going to happen are going to change the world. The things that are going to change the world are the love of Jesus. So I want to encourage you to go out and share His love. Share His love. Help somebody. Be good to somebody. Treat Him with love. Let Him know that Jesus loves Him. Go share the good news with Him. Okay? So, I just want to pray with you right now and, uh, uh, and then uh, encourage you to just go be who Jesus called you to be. Father, just thank you right now for your word. Thank you, Lord, that, that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life and that we won't have to go through this horrible uh, outpouring of your, of your wrath. We thank you. Your Bible, your word says that we are not appointed to, to your wrath. So we thank you right now for just reaching people and changing hearts today, meeting their needs. Pray right now you touch their lives and heal them and show them the, the wonderful things they have in store for them throughout eternity because of the love that you shed, uh, that, that you, you gave us through Jesus Christ. We just praise you and we give you honor in his holy, precious name. Amen. And I would like to invite you to come and be a, a part of all the World Christian Center. If you are uh, in the Grants Pass area, come and join us in Grants Pass, Oregon. Uh, 
at 237 Southeast G Street. We meet on Sunday morning at 10 and at 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening for our Bible study. And then we have, uh, we, we're all on, on the, the network. Oh, by the way, if you would like to, to bless us and, and help us to get the, the ministry uh, out into the world, uh, you can send a check to All the World Christian Center at P.O. Box 103, Grants Pass, Oregon. Okay? 975-28. And uh, we just want to bless you and thank you for listening and being a part of this ministry. In Jesus' name, amen.